chapters 39 and 40 will be highlighted in this overview. Make sure you understand ABO and RH incompatibility in the resulting hemolytic disease and the reason anti-D antibody is efficacious. I believe the explanation in this chapter will make the whole theory behind it so clear that you will no longer have any problems with test questions on the topic. Hyperbilirubinemia is common. We just need to keep tabs on it so that it doesn't go past the normal ways that neonates have of naturally dealing with it. These are some of the salient facts. If the jaundice is serious or bad, number one, it is evident within 24 hours of birth. Number two, it is greater than 50, if it is greater than 15 milligrams per deciliter at any time in a term baby, or if it is greater than 10 milligrams per deciliter in a preterm baby. Also, if it lasts greater than 10 days in a term or 21 days in a preterm baby, unless they are breastfeeding. Essentially, if jaundice is occurring before hospital discharge, it will be investigated, treated if necessary. Outpatient follow-up is absolutely necessary. Review page 645 if you need to remember why breastfeeding can make the bilirubin levels either rise or at least not diminish as quick as we would like. Breastfeeding can indeed make the situation temporarily appear worse, and yet it's part of the treatment plan as well. Pathologic hyperbilirubinemia is usually caused by hemolytic disease. We cover a number of anomalies in this chapter, many of which you may have been introduced to in pediatrics. We look at them here from the standpoint of what the nurse caring for the infant might notice or be asked by the parents. In case of most visible congenital anomalies, the parents are upset and do not want their child to be an object of curiosity, to be assessed or examined by every member of the staff and every student in the facility. They generally do want to talk about it to someone, but not necessarily to students, and you should respect their wishes. If they bring it up, discuss it with sensitivity, and always be willing to admit that you don't know very much about it. Be willing to find someone who does. If your nurse tells you about a baby with a defect and offers to allow you to see it, you will wait until the child is brought to the nursery and view it with your nurse or nursing instructor. Once a student of mine in L&D heard the staff say that a new baby had some anomaly, she asked the parents if she could see it there in L&D before they were taken to their room. They were still surprised since the anomaly was not detected before birth and were not happy to have the infant examined by a student the newborn nursery would have been a more neutral environment for the student to assess the infant. Not all hospitals use a newborn nursery. Some actually use the mother's own room and all exams are carried out in the mother's presence. In that case, the student may not have the opportunity to see an anomaly at all unless he or she is helping with the bath or diaper change.